Good morning, good morning. A wonderful Thursday it is, and we are very, very grateful because of the grace of God that is always uh, extended to us. We thank God for this week, and we thank God for his faithfulness. We thank God for his love. We thank God for the new masses that we receive every day of our lives. And for that reason, we want to thank God even for the opportunity even to share God's words together. And I want to ask that as you tune in and even as you catch up with us, even to pick the word of God and even to find and have fellowship that the Lord will continue to truly bless us and even bless this day that it turn out to be a blessing to us. Let us pray as we receive the word of God and even this day. Father, we thank you so much for the gift of this day. We want to thank you for your word that is life and light. We want to honor you for the opportunity to share and even to find fellowship with each other. We want to thank you for the beautiful, blessed day, this Thursday. And we receive every blessing that are apportioned and even established for this Thursday. And we pray that you bless us even as we share your word. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, brethren, another week that we continue to push on issues, various, various obstacles and the challenges that in one way or another the devil uses so that he can bar us our lives from enjoying the fullness of the holy spirit in our lives in other words these are the barriers of a whole full uh, filled uh, spirit uh, filled life in other words the enemy will always try because he knows the gift and the abundance of the grace and the love that we always enjoy when we allow the holy spirit even to fill us and even to have the liberty to take over our lives, to be connected with the purposes and the will of God, and even to understand the revelation and the wisdom and the knowledge about God and the mysteries in Him. He is always trying to curtail us that we may not be able to live Holy Spirit filled lives, that we may not be able to manifest the power of God in our lives. Because we remember what we said that Jesus. When he left and said, he is asking the Father to send us a helper, even the Holy Spirit, who will be our helper, our counselor, who will be our comforter, who will be able to remind us of all the things that we have been taught by Jesus, and not, that notwithstanding, even through the understanding of the word of God and its promises. And he also said that he will always live within us. He will not be among us alone or along us, but he will live in us. And therefore, that is the advantage that we have with God the Holy Spirit. But you see, the enemy knows that even when we understand the essence of the truth of the, of the Spirit of God and God the Holy Spirit, who is living and lives among us, that he may not be able to allow us to be able to walk with him. Remember, he is God the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And therefore, he is holy and God is holy, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And for that reason, if he is holy, then he requires of us that even when we come and we will receive him, and even we would want to dwell with him and him in us, that amazing what is needed is like we have to practice holiness. And therefore the devil tries in every means and every way to curtail us in one way or another, that we may not be able to allow the Holy Spirit to live in us. Allow me to talk about the issue, the wisdom of surrendering our lives wholly to God, even to the leading and to the counsel of the Holy Spirit. And for that reason, I want to pick several uh, things that we need to remember that we are supposed to be uh, careful about, and even we are supposed to understand them as the lead flags that we need to shun and to be careful that can be able to bar us from experiencing the blessing of the Holy Spirit living in us. And now barrier number one, barrier number one is a life of sin, a life of sin. Brethren, did you ever know that sin is one of the biggest and one of the most strongest barrier that bars us from experiencing the love of God the goodness of God, the masses of God, and the fullness, abundance, life that we receive through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, our sins were paid for. We are redeemed, brethren. By the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, 
The devil have no other anything that he can be able whatsoever to ask of us because our debt were paid. However, the Lord have required of us that we may be able to live a holy life. Remember the words of Peter encouraging the church, reminding them that be holy because he that called you is holy. He that called you from the world of darkness and sin to this marvelous light of righteousness of our life, he is holy. And therefore, if we desire to walk with him, to serve with him, to enjoy his fellowship, to enjoy his presence in our lives, then we must, by God's grace, keep ourselves from every manner of sin. Timothy, when he is encouraged by Paul about being a man that is a man of nobility, a man that is supposed to serve, and to serve in the noble ministry of Christ. Remember when he was told in the book of 2 Timothy and chapter 2 and verses 20, that in a big house, there are very many vessels. There are vessels of gold, vessels of silver, vessels of wood, and even says vessels of clay. And he was told, for you to be used in a noble way and to, be, and to become a noble vessel of specific and special use, then you must cleanse yourself from the letter. When you talk about the letter, from the wickedness and the things that he had talked before, from evil, from marriage, from filthiness, from any defilement, from any manner of ill and evil. In fact, remembering the words and the things that have been mentioned in the book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verses 19, all the way, when we are reminded about the work of the flesh, that if we are able to come out and be separated from every manner of evil, from any manner of unrighteousness, from any manner of wickedness, from any manner of sin, then we will be set apart and purified and become noble vessels for God. How and why noble vessels? It's because when we allow to live a life of cleanness, the Holy Spirit dwells in us. And when he dwells in us, one thing is sure, then the manifestation, the manifestation of the gift of the Spirit, the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit, goodness, faithfulness, love, kindness, self-control, and all these other fruits that have been mentioned in the book of Galatians 5 and verses 22, then they will be our portion. And brethren, if you pick the package of the fruit of the Spirit and manifestation of the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is healing, the words of wisdom, the words of discernment, and every manner prophecy, call them and every manner of the gift of the Spirit, even speaking in tongues, you will be shocked that we will be able to live a life of fullness and a life of meaning and a life that is relevant to the needs that are around us and also the needs of the world and the community around us. And therefore, what the devil always try is to throw things of sinfulness, is to throw issues of unrighteousness. They become a barrier and therefore the Holy Spirit cannot dwell in us in fullness. That's why even Paul reminds the church, don't you know? that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you know when the Paul is encouraging the church of Corinth, he is telling them, you know what? If you allow your, li your lives and your bodies to be involved in immorality and every manner of worship of other idols and eating things that are offered to other gods, you will be defiled. And when you are defiled, you will not be able to find fellowship with God. And therefore, your life become, uh, uh, they become helpless. And for that reason, brethren, I want to remind us this morning by the grace of God. May the Lord allow us by his, by his grace that we may not be able to live a life of sin. Sin, brethren, is an enemy to the issue's righteousness. And you know what? God is holy. God is holy. Our God is a God of righteousness. Our God is a God of justice. Our God is is a God of purity. And for that reason, for us to allow the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, we must live a holy life. Now, allow me just to say very fast that it is important by God's grace to be able to know when we shun evil, when we shun sin, then we are able to enjoy the righteousness of God. And this is what the Bible says, that righteousness exalted a nation. 
Righteousness exalted the nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. And the Bible says it is righteousness that exalteth nation. Brethren, even at this particular time, I want to encourage, is there any sin by any means that the devil is using to clog on your life? Is there any sin that you have been unable to deal with? This is the time to seek the help of God, the Holy Spirit, who is a helper, who will convict us of all sins, about judgment and about righteousness. Surrender, surrender yourself to the Holy Spirit and to God. And ask the Lord that may the Lord heal even those wounds of ill and sin. May the Lord take away all our stress and, 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 all our, and all our charity. May the Lord come through and allow us to repent and confess of our sins that we may be able to live a holy life. If we say that we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins. Let me bring it to an end by leading this verse to you. The book of Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1. The Bible says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses, let us draw out away everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us learn with perseverance the lace marked out for us. An encouragement from Paul. Therefore, brethren, since we are surrounded by such kind a multitude, and when this word, the word is, uh, is even is interpreted, it's not only the crowd and the physical and the human crowd, even the crowd of witnesses in heaven, the angels, and the ancestors that went before us, because of how we are surrounded, let us shun away every manner of sin. And even the Bible says here that hinders us the sin that so easily entangles us. Maybe there is a sin that entangles you. Maybe you are so quick to speak a lie. Maybe you are so quick to anger and to temper. Maybe you are so quick to be jealous about your friends and the people who God is giving success. Maybe you are so quick to learn to immorality. Maybe you are so quick to learn to the things that are evil. The Lord tells us, let us, by the grace of God, be able to shun away this, this sin that entangles us, and they become a barrier to our fellowship with God, to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And when we separate ourselves from the field, we will become men and women that are noble vessel before God. We will become men and women that are enjoying the fullness of the Spirit of God in our lives. We will become witnesses of the kingdom and ambassadors of Christ wherever we are even this day. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.